All right, and we're live at Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, not live for you guys watching on YouTube. Uh, we decided to do another quick tw 10 questions with Timmy Hill. So I'm going to go ahead and ask the first one. Um, Gary, I'm not going to answer your question, so sorry. Uh, Brandon wants to know, Timmy, how's the car this weekend? Um, coming to the track, we haven't hit the track yet, but uh, the car is a brand new car for us. And uh, we have a FR9 engine for this week. So we're hoping for you know a really big weekend for us. You know, we're hoping for uh, something really spectacular. So uh, just make sure to watch out for us. We're having, looking forward to a really great weekend. So. You want me to go ahead and ask Tyson since he has a long question? Yeah. All right, Tyson, Tyson wants to know, in this economy, we are seeing lots of lo drivers losing their rides due to not being able to find sponsorship. Does that make you even more grateful to have your sponsorship? Yep. Uh, point, we're lucky to have them. They, they came on here for the last 10 races for us. Uh, they've been a huge help for us. We have a, a great relationship so far, and um, we've, we've had a lot of solid runs with them so far. Uh, they couldn't come on at a better time. We're uh, in a tight battle for the Rookie of the Year Championship, and uh, right now we have one point lead. And uh, three races to go is really tight, but it makes it a lot more interesting. So um, we're, we're lucky to have point. We, we have a great relationship so far, and uh, it just uh, every, everything's it's cool. And uh, glad to have them. I right, go ahead and read your next one then. Looks like Tyson asked another question. It says, uh, "Who were?" A few of your favorite drivers growing up. Uh, some of my drivers growing up. Uh, I mean, yeah, remember I'm only 18, so it was just a couple of years ago. I mean, I always watched Jimmy Johnson, and Carl Edwards. You know, um, people don't like Jimmy Johnson because he said he wins too much, but that's the guy he, you want to, you know, be one day. He wins everything and uh, has everything on his way. And Carl, I always just like his attitude and, and uh, he's such a nice guy. I just don't want to pattern myself after him. And right, I'll ask the next one. Uh, Jeremy wants to know. What is Timmy's favorite video game besides iRacing? Um, well, everybody knows that the new uh, Call of Duty is coming out here next week, and uh, I'm already signed up to go get that game. The um, Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare is coming out, so uh, I'll be there bright and early to get that game and make sure I'll be playing that. So do you rush right to the, uh, the video store to get it when it first releases, or yeah, you well, wait a little while? No, I'll, I won't be one of those guys that camp out with the tents ready to get it. I'll be there. Um, I'll make sure to set my alarm around 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, next question is, uh, how's 2012 looking? That was from Martin. Uh, well, Martin, uh, 2012 is looking pretty good. Uh, looks like we're going to run the full season again with uh, Rick Ware Racing and the number 15 car. So uh, 2012 is going to look you know, even better season than what we have this year. I'm going to ask this one because I think it's absolutely hilarious. This is from Amanda. She wants to know, <laughs> Does Timmy Hill like old married women? Uh, I like him as friends. I don't know which way you're asking, but uh, we were just playing. Uh, we were just bowling with Amanda. She, she's a funny, funny person to be around. But uh, as a friend, yes, I, I like old married women. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and ask your next one. Um, looks like Todd Wilson Jr. asks, uh, "What is my favorite restaurant?" My favorite restaurant, uh, I say, would probably be Outback. Yeah. You always get the blooming onion when we first get there, and uh, I always make sure I get myself a, a nice cheeseburger. So uh, that's my favorite restaurant. Now we need to let everybody know you're typically almost everywhere we go. You order plain cheeseburgers. Yeah, it's uh, they get on me a lot about it. It's like uh, with Rick, we would always go to Buffalo Wild Wings, which is you know a wings place, but always get a cheeseburger. Or, or normally that's what I get everywhere I go. They can go to a barbecue place, they get a cheeseburger. Go to anywhere steak place, they get a cheeseburger. It's just something I always liked. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm kind of plain, kind of simple, but uh, I always judge the cheeseburger fine. Which place has the best? And I say Outback has it. You think Outback has uh, Okay, so anything outside of a steak place, what's the best hamburger? You've got, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, Whataburger, which is here in Texas. Um, what's the best burger that you've had besides Outback? Um, besides a steak place, maybe like a fast food place, I'll have to go with. Uh, Burger King and McDonald's are pretty tight, but I'll go with uh, probably McDonald's a little better. Wow. <laughs> I'm kind of a Wendy's guy myself. I, li I don't like the round corners. The square ones actually are a little bit better. Um, let's see what your next one is. Uh, Donovan wants to know, where did your racing career start? My racing career started in go-karts. It started at, uh, at my local track. It was 30 minutes from our house. It was at King George Speedway. It was in Virginia. 
and uh, that's when I started racing. Just um, go karts, the champ karts. Make sure we had roll cages. I don't want to get hurt thrown out of the flat karts. But, uh, that's where I started at. Now I'll answer this one because this is probably more towards the the organizations. Bobby Hall has actually got two questions back to back. He says, "What's going on with RWR next year? How many cars uh, full time and in what series?" <coughs> Well, with RWR next year, um, I'm excited and happy to say that we're going to be running at least um, one full season with Timmy in the Nationwide. More than likely, there's going to be two teams full-time. Um, I don't know if we'll uh, have a third team. Uh, right now, we have a lot of interest in, in a third team, um, but I'm not sure if that'll happen. Uh, but probably two full-time Nationwide Series teams, no start and park, so that's good. Possible third, we have to see how it all pans out. Um, as far as the truck series goes, um, I know we are going to do some uh, specified events, you know, some of the bigger events that's going on in the truck series. We are in talks with a couple people for a full season in trucks, uh, but we'll have to see how that goes. And as far as the Grand Am series, we got at least one, more than likely, it's going to be two full time teams, uh, a possible third at select events like the uh, possibly the 50th running of the uh, 24 Hours of Daytona, the Indianapolis inaugural race. Uh, Laguna Seca and probably Watkins Glen we might run three there um, you, you got the arena cross you've got the X Games uh, looks like we might be back in the modifieds again so we have a lot of big things going on for next year and um, even though it is November now we're still a little bit away from making a formal announcement so that's kind of where we are with those if you want to go ahead and do uh, who we got next Ian so Ian Ian Robert Stevens says uh, have you found out how to do the two car tandem um, I've ran two super speedway races so, so far this season and uh, finished 14th at Talladega and then uh, we were shaping up to get another top 15 run in Daytona but uh, we lost our, our partner with uh, a couple to go blew a tire and uh, so that kind of put us back to I think we finished 22nd in that race. Um, two car tandem I actually figured out pretty quick uh, I'd say. Uh, probably about the sixth or seventh lap out in my first race being Talladega on Super Speedway I was doing it and it's a lot of fun I figured it out pretty quick and uh, I was lucky to do that in a quick manner because if you don't do it then you're falling back in a hurry but um, I, I say I, I have why don't you go ahead and do Joseph's okay Joseph says who are your top five NASCAR heroes I have to go with uh, Jimmy Johnson Carl Edwards Dale Earnhardt Jeff Gordon and Donnie Allison. Wow, that's a pretty good list there. I, li I like that one. Uh, the last one's from Jack Jensen. It says, uh, "Do your more experienced drivers like Johnny and uh, and Carol Long? I think it's supposed to be Carl Long. Uh, <laughs> give you influence? Do, do they they help you at the track at all? Um, you know, Johnny, Matt, uh, Carl, um, and the other team team veteran drivers. They they help you along at all, or uh, give you much to go on at each track?" They certainly do, um, especially your teammates. You know, Johnny. There's a time, you know, I really felt down on myself. You know, we we were having run uh, so getting like a practice and qualifying. I really felt bad about the race, and you know, Johnny kind of he helped me along and, and you know, kind of you know, pumped my spirits up. Where you know, it's, it's a longer race, and he really kind of comforted me in a way where I kind of felt a lot better. And actually, you know, he gave me that advice, and then the crew got the car better, and actually we had a, a terrific race. So it, it, everything worked out, and uh, sometimes you need a little extra motivation, and he was able to give me that. Yeah, actually, last night uh, I was having dinner at, at a place called Jake's there in uh, downtown Fort Worth, and uh, I was I was a little shocked that uh, the two people that that came into the to the restaurant was actually you and Matt Carter was hanging out <laughs> together last night, and uh, I, I thought that was pretty neat. And actually, Matt got to share a little bit of his experience in the nationwide. And, and do you really get a chance to feed off of that information at all? Yeah, um, I, I normally try to listen in to see how different careers came about, and, and Matt, it's a pretty pretty neat career. Is uh, he's had, had a different opportunities, and some are not the best, but he makes the best out of them. Right. So it's it's good to hear uh, how different people go about things, and uh, Matt's stories is a good one. They go want to listen to. Right. Now let's let's talk a little bit. That's it for the uh, the ten questions. But let's talk a little bit about Texas Motor Speedway, Phoenix, and Homestead. Typically, when you go back to your second time at a track, you've been averaging anywhere from from fifth to nine spots better than your first time there. Um, 
I can't actually remember where you finished at Texas the the first time. I, I think you you were fairly decent. Um, what do you expect to come out of it with Texas? So what are you looking at finish wise? What's your 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 goal for this weekend? Um, towards the second half of the season, our, our goal has been to get top twenty finishes, and uh, I think uh, this this uh, particular race car is newly built and everything's coming together. Being the last couple races of the year, I, I, I really think that we can get a, a top 15 run here in Texas. You know, we need to improve each and every week, and I think uh, with the, the rate that we've been improving, I think we'll be able to get that this weekend. Yeah, I, I agree. Next week, you go to Phoenix, and actually, Phoenix is going to be a big weekend. You, you have uh, a lot of eyes on you, and um, you're making your return to the first time you ever made a nationwide debut at Phoenix, so this will show you how far you've come uh when you went to phoenix first time i think you got lapped uh, seven times it finished like 28th or 29th uh what's your expectations uh do you, do you really think that you're gonna be able to show a whole lot going back to phoenix or is it now totally out the window because the track has been resurfaced you know I, i've been told that the track's completely different now it's uh it's been moved around things have been changed so i think it's a different track now but uh Certainly, it has the same idea uh, as a, the type of track it was. Um, I still consider going out there and uh, improving spots is, is the thing to do. Um, I think uh, being, being that's the debut racetrack, even though it's been you know reconfigured, it's still uh, that's the place I got my first start at, and I, I always like to you know have my best around there. Right. Now with, uh, then, then you turn around and you go to Homestead for the closure. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about the Rookie of the Year battle. You've actually got, coming into Texas, a one-point lead uh, over Blake and a two-point lead over Ryan. And Ryan's not here, um, so actually you and Blake can spread that point lead out a little bit on him by a point just by your attempt. Um, where, where, what's, what's the goal this weekend? Do you think that you could pull this together and, and come out of this thing uh, with the points lead going into Homestead. That's my, my ultimate goal. Um, if I can get another point, a point or two here, that'll be um, that'll be terrific because it just takes a little bit of stress off you for the last two races. You know, you don't want to be behind going into the races. So if I can put the points lead as a bigger spread, that, that'll just be a bigger relief on myself and the whole team. Right, because right, right now there's actually a point for being the, the highest finishing uh, rookie in the overall standings. I think you've got like a a 40 or a 60 point lead you got a pretty healthy lead on blake on that um unless catastrophe happens it'd be hard to lose that point so even though you have one point now in theory you have a two point lead um you go out of here and hopefully get the rookie of the race uh gives you a three point lead um over blake with two races to go and make it extremely difficult unless you somebody cracks a top 10. uh ryan on the on the other hand is, is a different scenario he's actually going to race phoenix and uh, he's going to probably drop off on his bad finishes. So even though you might have a technically, if you win rookie the, the race, you'll have a four-point lead going into Phoenix. Um, he could drop off a couple points in a hurry there. Yeah. So um, it, it's going to be a close race. Uh, how much pressure do you feel on that? I mean, it, it's we've talked about it all year, and now it's down to the nitty-gritty. It's you know we talked about it yesterday that this is basically the championship weekend for you right here at Texas. It pretty much is. Um, I feel like if we can get rookie the race here. It, then it really puts a lot of pressure on the other guys on uh, on what they got to do at the, the the last two races. Um, so the pressure's on. This is their track. I feel like I gotta I gotta get rookie of the race, and uh, we're certainly gonna try our best to do it. I think we can. Um, you know, I'm not gonna try not to worry about those other guys, but you know, uh, our team with Rick Rear Racing on the 15 car has just been phenomenal. I think uh, we'll be able to pull it off. I, you know, I, I certainly think so. And, and win or lose that, what's what's your thoughts right now with the way the program has progressed in 2011? What's, what's your thoughts and plans for 2012? What's your expectations for 2012? You know, now we actually got a game plan of how these races normally turn out. And, uh, you know, everybody, you got to remember that this is our first full-time season nationwide as a team. And, um, Ever. <laughs> so now we got all the notes we need. Uh, we get the ideas of what kind of cars, how many set them, set them up for next year. And um, I certainly think that next year we have a, a really good shot of getting top 10 points for a driver and owner. No, that'd be phenomenal. Well, I want to thank you for getting in here and uh, 
Actually, you came in here because it's cold outside. In Texas, it's not that warm, folks. It's I'll actually freezing. It I got my coat on there. Yeah, it's freezing in Texas, but uh, I, I want to thank you for taking the time to, to talk to the fans. Keep sending us your questions. Um, keep pulling for the 15. And uh, uh, just for the record, um, Mr. Gary, this is Timmy Hill. All right. I'm Timmy Hill. Thank you for guys watching. <laughs> All right. See you later. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>